at first, like all of us, I thought I'd be short-lived, a month or so. Unprecedented times indeed, but nothing like war. I weren't being asked to go anywhere, to leave behind me family or mates. All that was asked of me was to stay home, sit, watch telly and that until I could go out again. I mean, it really wasn't that bad, you get me? A month, 30 days of my life. Not too much to ask. So I obliged, as I believe most of us did. I think everyone was too scared to break the rules in those early days. Country after country slamming shut, leaving us all alone, just us and our phones. I'll be honest though, it was alright at first. But it did get harder. Not because I couldn't go out and see my mates, go parties, any of that. Although I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to do those things. But because my mum got ill with it. Coronavirus. COVID-19. The thing we're all so bored hearing about every day. But when you think your own mum's got it. Not that there were even tests that early on. You can't help but scroll through pages. and I mean pages of information that's only going to terrify you. There'll always be a website telling you they'll be sound. 58 ain't too old. Diabetes ain't the worst underlying health condition. Virus ain't even that bad, kid. <laughs> but then there's the other website. The one that says that they probably won't make it. You believe the first one, though. You cling to it, because what else you got? The government's gone quiet, set for that mop air fucker who prances on to show his face and pretend he's Churchill. Do you remember how he first announced this all? Flag behind him, hands clasped on desk. His moment is Dunkirk. All he's thinking about was how he looked, how the history books would paint him. Him and his mates at Cheltenham Races didn't give two fucks about me mum then. Show pretended to a few days later though. I'll tell you who actually gave a shit. The nurse who worked in ICU where my mum ended up would ring me every morning, quarter past eleven, even though she weren't allowed so that I could speak to my mum. The same nurse who had to tell me that mum weren't going to make it no more. But I got to say bye over the phone. Do you know what that's like, Bojo? Of course you don't. But don't bother giving her a pay rise, though, or feeding the kids that you're starving. Give it to yourself and your mates and said, Sound. Don't know why, but I obeyed the rules still. I sat here in this empty gaff watching a dickhead on telly who went round Durham Castle for a day and better still, won't apologise because we... The public don't understand. What is there not to understand? Please tell me, what am I missing? Tell me, please. But time passed and with the help of me mates, I feel a bit better. It doesn't all look so bleak. So I go out, eat, drink, see those mates, save the economy. <laughs> and then of course, by eating out and helping out, the younger generation become the scapegoats. And now we're rawly fucked once more. But this time it's our fault, the selfish ones. Blood's on our hands now. Good thing my mum ain't alive, because I probably would have killed her by going out like the gunman told me to. Fast forward a few months and look where we are, back in lockdown. And suddenly, I don't blame those fighting for freedom. As stupid as that sounds and as stupid as they look, because when I look at myself, motherless, jobless, hopeless, I wonder what it is that I have left. Free speech. Yeah, sound, mate. So, I've come to the conclusion that there's only one way of making you sit up and pay attention. Do you remember Bobby Sands? IRA man who died on hunger strike, finally forcing I am Maggie to listen. Ain't that ironic? The government will only listen when someone says they'll kill themselves, and even then, they wait until the person's dead first. What the fuck? So I hope my actions cause you to listen. To listen to everyone, to finally hear the voice of this country screaming out for help as you deny them meals, crush their families and their future dreams. And if you don't listen, well, then I'm just another casualty in a war that humanity is losing. You see, Boris, it's not that I can't hold on any longer. It's that I simply don't want to. I don't like where you're taking us. And I want it to stop. And this is the only way... I think they'll listen.